change that so it's going to perform the macro on the cells that you select. To do that, all you have to do is where it says range and then it gives a cell reference dot select delete everything before the dot select and type in active cell so go ahead and do that everywhere it says range and then gives a cell reference And then also I'm going to go ahead and delete where it says range C4.select. The only reason it says that is because I hit enter after I input the last formula. And there's nothing underneath this range. So it's selecting a cell for no reason. I'm going to delete that. And now, whenever you click, it's going to select the active cell. So that's the very simple way to change it. Um, I'm also going to introduce another thing, the offset function right now. Because I'll explain why. When I recorded the macro, I'm going to go back to this screen, I only clicked these cells here. So I only clicked these. But I want to change it to make it so that when I click over here, it's going to run the macro on this cell, or this cell, or this cell. So I have to change that because before I clicked here. So the way that you do that is instead of just active cell you do active cell dot offset open parentheses now what you want to enter here are two numbers separated by comma the first one is the row offset here and what that means is this if I click cell a1 and I have a row offset of say 2 it's going to go two rows down from a1 so it's going to select two rows down and then run the macro. So what I want to do is make it so that when I click the column on the far left, the macro spits out a formula for columns which start two columns to the right of where I click. So I want to put a zero in for the row offset, and I want to put a two in for the column offset. Now, it's also worth noting, there are four of these active cell dot selects here, where there were four ranges. So each one pretty much is attached to the formula below it, where it says active cell dot formula R1C1. So this active cell up here goes to that one. The next active cell goes to the next formula below that, and so on. So now since I've done active cell that offset 0 comma 2, what that allows me to do is click this cell here on the left and two columns to the right, 1, 2, the macro is going to run its formula. So I'm going to get the number to spit out. So that's why you have to do that. Now going back here, I'm just going to type in the other offsets. Now, since I've already done one offset, when the macro finishes calculating the number of employees here, or breaking it from the original, the aggregated uh, data, I'm going to be two columns to the right of where I clicked. So now, I only have to go one more column to the right. So it's a little confusing, but I only have to go one more over to the right, and then I'll be at the next place to record my formula or to run the, have the macro run. Same thing here, just one over, close parentheses. Oops, forgot the period. Zero comma one, close parentheses. Now, what that's done is it said, I'm gonna click a cell, and I'm going to go two to the right of that cell, and I'm going to run this. Then I'm going to go one to the right of that cell, I'm going to run this. Then I'm going to go one to the right of that cell, and run this, until you get to the end. So that's all that that says. So now, if I go and save this, go back to 
to my spreadsheet, I'm going to be able to run this macro on any one of these cells. So I'm going to use my shortcut, Control E, and there you go. It starts pulling in all the data correctly from wherever I want it. So wherever I click, it works. So I click here, then I run the macro, and it goes one, two, and it starts record or it starts running. And when it finishes the number column, it skips to the benefits plan, the region, and the corporate card. So that's how it works. And I'm just going to delete this. However, what if I want to do more than one at a time? So I'm going to try and do that, but it doesn't work. It only gives me the first one in the selection. So now I'm going to show you how to make it so you can select a lot of data points at once, or many different cells, and have it run. Go back to the VBA editor, and it's very simple. All you have to do here is to replace everywhere it says active cell with selection. So, simply like this. going to copy it. Okay, now I'm going to save it. And all I did is replace, replace everything that said active cell with selection. That's all. So now I'm going to go back to my Excel file, and so run it once here, it works, once here it works, now I want to do all of these, because I'm sick and tired of clicking them separately, so I run it, and there you go, so it saves you so much time, and it can do a batch of them now, so that's how you can change the macro, now I'm going to go back here for a moment, just to recap what we did, at first, here you had ranges. All we did was change the range to either active cell dot offset or selection dot offset. And then you select the offset. And the offset is how many places to the right, to the left, or up or down you want to go from where you originally clicked, from where the first active cell is. And then after that, we changed this to selection. So we changed it from active cell to selection. So putting selection in all of these instead of active cell allows you to select multiple cells at once and have it run. Now the last thing I want to do is explain the second line here. So this does the selection of the cell and this is the formula that's going to be run in the cell. Now you'll notice there's an equal sign and then quotations. Everything in the quotation is what goes in the cell. So this goes in the number column. And it's the exact formula that I typed in earlier. Equals left, then you have the cell reference, and the number of characters I want. So it's worth noting, instead of cell A1 or B3 or anything like that, your cell reference is going to be in this format. So what that says, RC, negative 2 with brackets around it, is go two cells to the left of the current cell and that's going to be the cell reference. So that's how it references cells. It is kind of confusing, but the most important thing you should get out of this out of this is how to change cell references, so just ranges to selections so that you can select any cell you want and run the macro. I'll explain how to change the formulas later, but just know that you can put any formula in here and it's going to run it in the particular cell selected from up here. So that's uh, just about it.